Outro cast. That is a very impressive background behind you. Is that Harvard or you're going there in like a month or two? <laughs> no, I'm starting my uh, second year um, in, I guess, the end of August. So yeah, I just finished up my first year. I'm at home right now in Toronto. Right. Well, we were connected to talk about how you have so many darn things going on. I mean, last month, we finally saw Muppets Mayhem, et cetera. How many yeah. projects ago was that for you? Like, was that three projects ago? No. So um, I, <laughs> it's a great story. I finished shooting Muppets in like beginning of August last year. Mm -hmm. and I had two weeks to leave LA, go home to Toronto, pack up my whole life, and go to school. So I finished on Muppets, went to college, and then basically while in college, I mean, I guess if we're going to count like animation, I've been able to like keep up um, different like animated series that I've been doing, mm -hmm. but for the most part, in terms of like live action stuff, um, Muppets was the last project. And then I kind of, I went to school and had my first year at Harvard kind of uninterrupted for the most part, other than like press trips here and there in LA and mm -hmm. New York, and whatnot, and flying out on random weekends and my friends being like, where are you going? And I was like, ah, I'll see you on Monday. <laughs> um, love you so much. And then, yeah, so technically it was the last project, but um, I'm excited for, for what's to come. If you hear chirping in the background, by the way, it's my pet bird. <laughs> if you hear beach noises, it's the beach. But anyway, uh, back to you here. Flex, flex, okay, uh, okay. The, the reason I was asking about how many projects ago does have to do with how successful you've been since a very young age within the voiceover animated world. And it's very impressive in that a lot of people, when they start in that as children, once their voice changes, they no longer can get work because, you know, the betweener kind of voice. In your case, the work has continued to keep coming. But how much of the success you've had in the animated voiceover world was organic versus just an accident where the work just kept leading to more work? That's a great question. I mean... I, it does depend. I think with like female voices, it's easier um, in the sense that like, if you're hitting puberty, your voice isn't going to change as much as, you know, your male castmates. Um, I was on shows where like I started when I was maybe like 11 or 12 and went till I was like, 15 16 and over the course of the show like my male co-stars had to be replaced because yeah. they hit puberty and they no longer sounded like the little voice that they once were whereas I guess with me of course my voice has changed and it's matured and that's natural but like for the most part I'm good at like getting back to whatever voice placement that I originally was at regardless of whether I was maybe like maybe that was like my natural 11 year old girl voice but like I can revert back to it now if I need to um so yeah I I think uh, yeah I guess like once you, it's like kind of a snowball effect once you have done animation you kind of get in the swing of things and mm -hmm. and one thing leads to another um but at the same time like it's also a game of just like you know how this industry is it's not you can never predict these things and so when it comes to like booking new projects or whatever like it's kind of the same with live action where it's, it's, it's different, but it's also the same in the sense that like, it's up to whether or not, you know, the execs of that project like you or, or think that you're the right sure. fit. And you know, it's, it's whatever's meant for you will, will be for you. So that's just kind of how I operate. And, and when things come, I enjoy them and I love them. So we've established you're easy to work with. That's the <laughs> I, I mean, <laughs> so I've been told whether it's true, I don't know. Maybe everybody's just lying to me. Well, with uh, how many <laughs> roles that you've had in animated and voiceover shows and also being Canadian, have you worked on anything with Maurice LaMarche? Um, wait, may maybe? 
we've definitely never been in the studio together, but there's, there are things where like, there are certain names that you'll hear thrown around all the time. And then like, yeah. you, like with animation, it's really tough because like, you'll be in a studio alone for the most part. Like there have been only some projects where I've done cast um, group sessions to mm -hmm. record, but like for the most part, I'm always by myself in there and they put it together later. So half the time, I frankly don't even like know who I'm working with unless it's a friend that's like, hey, like we're on the same show. You don't know this. And I, I didn't know until somebody told me, but we are. So. Or the junket or the cast party or that kind of a thing. Yeah. Yeah, literally. And oftentimes they're like with animated like kid shows, they just kind of come out and that's about it. Well, how does the filming work on Muppets Mayhem? Because it's obviously not all human beings in a standard thing because there's puppets or Muppets, if we want to call it that way. So yeah. there's got to be shots when you're not around and production yeah. when you're not around. <laughs> so the interesting thing with Muppets is that we film three to four feet up on deck. So like our sets are built three to four feet up and they're basically like squares that can be removed so that our Muppet performers can be below us with their you know puppets and their hands up um, and then we just kind of have the job of not having to fall in or at least trying not to none of us did we were always kept very safe um, on the record um, oh, oh well I have to interrupt do, do you know because this is before your time but do you know the show Alf no okay this you will, once you go down a YouTube rabbit hole, you'll go, I don't understand how this was an American sitcom that lasted for many years. ALF, A-L-F. He was this puppet and that stood for alien life form. And oh. it was a regular sitcom, but then one puppet who somehow lived with that whole family. Interesting. When you Wait, see maybe I should know about this. Maybe I'm just like so horrible for not knowing. My parents are probably gonna like yell at me after they're gonna be like, you know, you Alf, that was my favorite show. I don't know. Yeah, yeah <laughs> you have to know everything ever. You shouldn't everything focus ever. on your Harvard I'm study. sorry to disappoint. <laughs> but but in the case of Alf, what I've seen in the behind the scenes footage is some of it was a puppet and some of it was a little person in a replica costume. So they had both of those and there were some falls that happen when you see. In the oh UK. my. No, gratefully, like none of our cast well, unfortunately, there were instances of um, who remembers falling, but after that, everybody was like super safe and and yeah, everything was taken care of. But yeah, the sets are built three to four feet up, and wow. it's interesting. Like sometimes there were instance it, instances where like we were not necessarily needed on set um, because like the technicality of working with the Muppets is just so intense and nuanced that. Um, sometimes it's easier, like it's all, it, no matter what, when you're working with Muppets, it's always easier to have as, like, as few people on set, or at least on the floor as possible. You can have them, you know, by the monitors and whatnot, but like, anybody on the floor, like, it's best to keep it to a minimum just because of the way we operate. Um, but I think there were many times where they were like, you can stay or you can go, like we technically don't need you for the shot and they'll be fine. Like you gave them a great performance. They know what they're working with now. Um, and there were like, most of the time, anytime that would happen, I'd be like, no, I'll stay. And they were like, I mean, you can, like it's safe, like and it's okay. Cause you're in like this little corner and like you're not getting in anyone's way, but like, mm -hmm. you know, it's, it's just, it's so, magical to work with the Muppets um sure. and and it's you know on on any other set you know sometimes you want to take breaks or like maybe you'll need a breather or whatever but like with the Muppets you're like you want to soak it all up I remember just like several times a day every day on set I was constantly pinching myself and I I just I was like oh my gosh this isn't going to last forever at least like in this given moment, like I know this is like a finite amount of time that we're shooting this show and it's just such a unique and magical experience that not everybody gets. Like I feel like one of the luckiest people in the world to be like, I worked with the Muppets, like it's insane. So I was just yeah. like, oh, I'll stay on set as long as you need me, I don't care. <laughs> That's great to hear that you had such a wonderful experience and going oh, yeah. down those lists of credits, I mean, that's one institution 
Degrassi is another institution. There's a lot of longstanding things on your resume. And are we allowed to know what's coming next or is Harvard the focus for the next six to nine months? <laughs> um, I mean, it's summer right now, so I'm working on a couple of things. Um, oh, great. Yeah, I like in terms of like the next like project with like film and TV, I cannot discuss. Right. But um, I am a UNICEF Canada ambassador, so I'm always doing a lot of my like activism and humanitarian kind of work with them and, you know, utilizing my platform for whatever good I can there. Um, and I am venturing into like just dipping my toes. We'll see what, you know, I'm, I'm 19. I just turned 19. Yes. So I'm still like figuring out what I love. And I mean, I do have a couple things obviously that I do love, but, um, you know, seeing if there are other parts of the industry that I want to explore. And I, I do want to explore them. It's like whether or not they, they end up lasting. Um, but I'm venturing into producing and writing and directing. Um, and yeah, I, I have a spinoff of, I don't even know if I'm allowed to say this, like I, there's a spinoff of a show that I used, to, am I allowed to say this? But well, maybe- well, We could just leave it off. There's a spinoff and yes, there's spin -off like an Instagram. Um, that's if happening. you want to find out what it is when you're allowed. Yeah, go to my Instagram, you'll learn soon. Um, but yeah, venturing into to, to writing for sure. I'm working with, um, uh, Aircraft Pictures, who is the, who are the producers on The Breadwinner. Mm -hmm. which is the animated feature I did way back when uh, yes. they were nominated for a Golden Globe and an Oscar for that one um, and so I'm working with them on on a on a story um, that I'm really really excited about uh, and, and writing that um, and yeah I, I think school is really like you know taking priority right now obviously I'll take sure. time off when when the right uh, project comes up but you know Harvard is such a unique experience in and of itself and my education is really important to me and there's so much more that I want to do beyond the industry um, and within the industry that I think this experience of my education and just this time in my life is really um, going to be beneficial for and, and, and benefit me later on so I'm just like mm -hmm. really trying to be present and enjoy my time with with the people that I'm, you know, currently surrounded by. Well, last question I have for you before I let you go, the Muppets show that you have been a part of, musically <laughs> oriented show, because yeah. hey, we're talking about A&R people. It's great that now kids are learning what an A&R person is and does and all that kind of thing. What's the last concert that you went to for fun? Um, the last concert that I went to was, uh, I'm trying to remember if it was something after Dominic Fike. I think it might, yeah, I think Dominic Fike might've been my last concert. He's freaking amazing. I love him. Um, been obsessed with him for years. I'm not going to be one of those people that's like, I listened to whoever before, like they but were you popular. Did. <laughs> but like low key a little bit. Um, but yeah, no, he's incredible. So talented. I went to his concert in Boston. It was finals period. And I went with two of my good friends. Uh, we went into Boston from Cambridge and, and had a great time there. I'm so excited. I'm seeing SZA in September um, with some of my best friends. So super, super excited about that. Wait, oh my gosh, no, it was, <laughs> I was so wrong. Dominic Fike was in December um, at, on campus. We have something called Yard Fest, which is like in Harvard Yard. There's like a big oh. concert that happens um, in the spring semester. And it's just like, everybody comes out. It's amazing. And we had, um, I we were all debating on campus. It was a big, just like communal argument about how to pronounce his name. Jeremy or Jeremiah, I don't know. Oh, oh yeah, yeah. Perfect. Yeah, yeah. We, yeah, we just like <laughs> didn't know, but it was so much fun uh, because I was just like with all my friends, but yeah, the last concert I like actively bought tickets for and chose to go to was Dominic Fike. Well, you have great taste on the musical end. Uh, you have exciting projects coming up, your humanitarian stuff, 
not so bad at all. Looking forward to that. Glad to hear there's writing and producing coming up. I, I just don't know what to be most excited about, but what's the best way for us to keep track on it? Is it the TikTok? Is it the gram? Where do we go for your latest and greatest? Definitely my Instagram. Um, I am, I perpetually have TikTok offloaded. To be honest, I never really post on there. Um, maybe that's something I'll, you know, kick up in the future. Um, but definitely Instagram is definitely my most consistent way of doing everything. It's kind of like my blog and, and like virtual diary, just kind of like everything I'm working on kind of goes there. Um, and, and yeah, just for general updates about me, follow me at Sarah Chaudhry. That's where to find me. Outro cast.